let's get some cartoons and vodka and do them all night long. I was gonna review Akira, didn't you? Well, I'm not gonna, because Akira is long and thick. I, it's really good manga, of course, but I can't really think of any manga less suited to my 20 minute summarization review format. Uh, I held this up at the end of the last video to trick you, um, but you know, it, it's, it's cool. It's like an old epic print of Akira. It's in color, it's left to right, and that, that's neat. But no, not reviewing Akira today. Instead, we're going to talk about another manga from Katsuhiro Otomo, Domu. This manga opens with a nice, juicy mystery. A man jumped off the roof at a frankly massive government housing complex. Not really noteworthy, except this is the 25th death in three years at this place, and the cops are getting a bit sick of it. The lead detective starts casting about for more creative angles when it's revealed that the latest victim was wearing his delightfully tacky winged hat when he walked off the roof, but said hat is now missing. A little bit of digging reveals a couple other cases of missing items. Detective Man asks, uh, someone who knows about suspicious characters. There's giant guy with the mind of a child, lady who lost her kid and pushes around empty stroller. Oh, and sitting next to senile old man Cho is ex-con alcoholic McBeats' his kid. Haven't seen a red herring that blatant since Think Fast. Oh, we don't have a clip of an ancient Nickelodeon game show? Not, not surprised. Also, how is old man Cho feeding himself if he's senile and lives alone? Head Detective's really bulky pager is the next object on the psychic killer's list of stolen toys. Oh, yeah, the killer is psychic. Oh no, it's old man Cho, decked out in all his murder swag. And then the detective is forced to jump off the roof through mind control. Now that first chapter was a pretty solidly set up mystery with twists and red herrings, but after the reveal, that's all kinda out the window, and it's not like we expect the cops to be able to help stop the psychic killer. And old Cho is clearly getting more brazen as he prepares to throw a baby off a balcony in order to see its head splat. But then this new girl, who is literally just moving in, stops the baby with her own psychic powers? Um, eh. She scolds old man Cho for doing such an awful thing. Cho tries to throw a rock at her, but she's apparently stronger than him, and Cho does not like that. Okay, this story changed what it's about really fast. Suddenly all the cop stuff is just a wheel-spinning B story, and it's almost entirely about old man Cho versus Etsuko. And if your issue with Akira was that there wasn't enough psychic versus psychic action, Domu has you covered. And from this point on, the plot events aren't really big enough to cover in order. Suffice it to say, Etsuko isn't down for Cho's petty violence, and Cho is not about to have a girl telling him what to do. Etsuko seems to have more raw power than Cho, but Cho can mind control people, a trick she is either unfamiliar with or just can't do. She can still restrain his puppets, but using innocent people as weapons is a really effective tactic against a good girl like Etsuko. This culminates with Cho giving the alky dad of Etsuko's friend the gun he stole, and, well, a lot of people get shot. Etsuko finally picks up on where Cho is hiding after her friend got shot and just zorps up to the roof. Fair to say, she isn't gonna try talking this madman down. Cho goes for a large-scale version of taking hostages by remotely turning on the gas in a bunch of apartments. Etsuko tries to stop him by shattering all the windows. Good plan, but uh, she missed some, I guess, and Cho still causes a plenty big boom. And now Etsuko has finally had enough and decides it's time to kill this old coot. What follows is some of the best psychic action I've ever seen. Like, Akira may have been grander, but this is an actual fight. We watch them smash and break concrete and steel as they launch attacks at each other. They fly through the sky for parts and the perspective work is truly incredible. I especially want to highlight these panels of Cho running on a wall. Etsuko really starts to lose herself and just evaporates a fireman who was on scene. Old man Cho manages to run for just long enough that Etsuko's mom shows up and kicks her out of the murder fugue. Months later, and the dust is starting to settle on this housing project. Old Man Cho was brought in by the police, but they really couldn't get anything out of him, and it's not like they had a crime to charge him with. Etsuko's family moved out. 
But she's come back. She has unfinished business. This time, there's no one to interrupt their mental struggle. As they stare down, the ground cracks and the swing set dents as the mental pressure starts to bear down on Cho. As Cho finally begins to succumb, all the children take notice almost magically of the psychic fight in their midst. Cho dies on that bench, and the children wander off to play more games. And that's Domu! It's not very long, and most of the back half is an action set piece. It's honestly really fun, and a much easier reading recommendation than Akira. Akira is work. Domu is a treat. But surely, Pluto, that can't be the whole episode. That's like five minutes, and this is the hundredth episode. It's supposed to be special. Well, I, I wanted to do a little introspection. See, I've been, I've been doing the show for a long time, and it's changed a lot since I got started. Back in the early days, I was very consciously just doing the Channel Awesome format. In fact, episode 12 was me just doing Linkar's shtick of read something and react to it. And I'm not the same person I was when I started the show, beyond the obvious. I don't really want to just look at the things that happen in a piece of work and snark at them and make jokes and do my funny little skits. I certainly enjoy making these reviews entertaining to a certain degree, but it's just not really what I'm so much interested in anymore. And maybe you've noticed that in the episodes that I've made recently where I am focusing more on like a central thematic point that I want to dig into or, uh, you know, maybe in the case of, like, Shield Hero, I dig into a bunch of things that I noticed. But the point is, I'm going for a more ideas-critical focus rather than these are the things, let me make jokes, because I'm such an entertaining and dynamic personality. I like to think I'm a pretty interesting guy, but I am not a donkey-style freewheeler. I can't do that, and I'm not a genius comedy writer. And even beyond that, like... My friends are busy. Like, have you seen Jay or Crystal lately? I have. They can't come over, even if it wasn't the middle of a pandemic. It's just that the show's gonna be different now, and I don't just want to do manga. You know, like I said before, doing the Channel Awesome format, part of the reason I went into manga was because there was a gap in that critical spectrum. You know, we had Lean Kara, who does them occasionally. Uh, read Left to Right is still, like a podcast, I think, but this kind of, like, sit-down focused review never really caught on for comics uh, or manga. What you get more of a is the sort of a chapter thing on YouTube. That's the big thing on YouTube for manga reviewers is to just talk about, like, one chapter as they read it, and even then, the space on YouTube for manga reviewers pales in comparison to the space you find for anime. And I'm just not interested in talking about anime. Like, that's the thing I've never been super into. Like, hey, if an anime comes out of a manga I like, that's cool. I can talk about the anime as I've understood it through the manga. And usually they're close enough and not that different. Apparently, the Shield Hero anime t lightens up a little on the manga, which was already lightening up on the light novel. But, uh, you know, Doro Hetero came out uh, on, an on Netflix, and that was fantastic. I actually watched that because the manga was so good, and the anime did a really nice job of compressing it into a more digestible format. But it did lose some of the arts. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering here, because I'm just talking to you, because this show has been going for a long time, and I want to take it in a new direction. I want to talk about other things. I really love horror movies. I can't even go into the amount of video games I want to make videos about. Uh, I've made a few already, like, just things on the channel. I don't know if I'm going to continue the super giant games thing, but I definitely have a lot of things I want to talk about, and they aren't just manga. And, again, I'm not the same person as when I started this, as you can tell. Um, I don't really have an answer for where I'm going in this transition, but that's not the point. Um, I'm still Pluto, and I'm still going to be here talking about all this fun stuff. So in terms of business of housekeeping, uh, the Patreon's going to get uh, reworked a little. There wasn't really much activity on there. I had a couple people giving me money, and that was very nice of them. I really appreciated it. But going to change that up a little, something a little bit more manageable. I had this thing where I had to come out with like a full scripted episode every month, and I, I kind of want to do more than that, but at the same time, like, having a deadline made it really uncomfortable sometimes. Like, this is the first month I've missed ever, 
uh, uh, J July, this video was supposed to come out in July, and uh, I was supposed to move, and that didn't happen, and that was very disruptive. So yeah, we're gonna keep making stuff on this channel, I hope you enjoyed the shifting focus we're gonna have around here. I'm gonna try and grow the channel, try and talk about things that I think will get clicks, not just stuff I want to talk about. Like, obviously, I will only make videos about stuff I want to talk about, but, like, I have a huge list of things I want to talk about. I can pick and choose the ones for now that I think will get some clicks. Most specifically, the next video I want to do is on Tremors. You know, those those horror movies, the first one with Kevin Bacon in it? The, they're really good! I want to talk about them! But yes, 100 episodes for Eagle Land. I'm gonna keep the name and Pluto Burns. The branding's good, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and I'm the only person who counts. Now, you may have noticed there's no Sobies in the latest videos. I Yes, I did do that on purpose. I can't get them anymore. They're only on Amazon, and I'm trying not to buy things from Amazon. But it's gonna be an interesting shift around here, and I hope you enjoy it. Till next time, I'm Pluto Burns, and this has been Eagle Land. Muffin! <laughs>